Copland is a crime flick released in 1997, a film made by James Mangold, director of Logan, Ford vs Ferrari, Walk the Line, and is set to helm the new Indiana Jones movie. Copland is quite a strange case, because it is a cop movie with a stunning cast. The lineup for crime movie fans is mouthwatering. There's so many actors known for roles in crime films, and guys who would later gain fame in the mafia TV show The Sopranos. It's pretty crazy Mangold had in the same film the likes of Sylvester Stallone, Harvey Keitel, Ray Liotta, Robert De Niro, Frank Vincent, Robert Patrick, Kathy Moriarty, and guys who would later gain fame on The Sopranos like Eddie Falcao and Tony Sirico. It's an amazing lineup. I mean, just to have Sly, De Niro and Harvey in it alone makes it worth watching. And yet the crazy thing is, you very rarely ever hear this movie brought up. No one ever talks about it. It doesn't ever feature on, you know, top 20 crime movie lists or anything like that. And it's a shame, because it is a good movie. It's a really good picture. A lot of phrases like hidden gem and underrated get thrown around a lot these days, but I think these terms do apply to Copland. If you are someone who likes crime flicks, the kind that guys like Sidney Lumet used to make in the 1970s like Serpico and Prince of the City, which Copland is in the same milieu of, and feels like it belongs in the same category of films as those. It even seems to have been shot with an extra grainy retro look. But anyway, let's say you are a crime film fan and you're looking to get your fix. To find that there is a movie with all these great actors in it hiding away at the tail end of the 90s is surely an eye-opening and captivating revelation. I wonder why Copland is not more well known and talked about. I was pretty young when it came out so I don't remember its release, but it does seem to have been well received. It made around 50 million dollars off a 15 million dollar budget, and yet it seems to have evaporated. I think the reason might be, or partly might be, is because Copland is quite a relatively low-key film. It's a very quiet movie. It's not an epic in any sense of the word. And perhaps the lack of noise and grandose has made it fade away into obscurity, being lumped together with other lesser-known Stallone vehicles like Lock Up and The Specialist. There's not a lot of action. It's about one and a half hours long and is focused on a sleepy New Jersey suburban community. And when you look at the cast, just seeing names like De Niro, Keitel and Liotta, you might have images going off in your head of epic mob movies and cop flicks that have killer soundtracks and are all three hours long, or seeing the cast headlined by Sly, and think of more action oriented police films like Heat. I'm guessing it must have been a disappointment for people who nearly orgasm just by looking at the cast alone to watch a film where Stallone ambles around town staring blankly at letterboxes and De Niro is hardly in it. Expectations may have played a part in the film's apparent insignificance. What I mean to say is, people must have expected another Goodfellas or Heat, and because the film is nothing like that, it was dismissed. I don't know if that's how it went down, but if you have seen Copland and didn't like it, I would recommend revisiting it. I remember when I watched it for the first time, I was just a kid, and I enjoyed it, but there were a lot of things I didn't understand and pick up the first time around. And even at the time, I was thinking to myself, what's the point of having all these great actors if they're hardly in the film, or if you're not really doing much with them? But upon rewatch, not only were my expectations more measured, but I was able to appreciate the subtleties of the film and appreciate the magnificent acting, because it really is a brilliantly acted film, regardless of how much screen time your favourite actor of the bunch gets. Everyone is on form, and it really is an acting-driven film. I heard that a lot of the actors took the minimum SAG wage for the film. That pretty much highlights their intention, that it wasn't a project where they were looking to make a quick buck and piss off. It suggests they genuinely felt there was value in the script and utilised it to show off their acting chops. It reminds me of Glengarry Glen Ross, another film with an all-star cast that you just don't hear mentioned a lot, starring Al Pacino, Jack Lemmon, Alec Baldwin, Alan Arkin, Ed Harris, Kevin Spacey and Jonathan Price. I read once that these guys would show up on set even when it wasn't their day to shoot, just to watch the other actors do their thing, out of love for the craft. And Copland is very similar. It's small scaled, tight and very much focused on the performances, with the actors utilising a very good script to deliver the goods, and it's packaged in a movie that is very well shot. 
All three of these aspects of the movie, the acting, the script and the cinematography, are in perfect equilibrium. And with the relatively short runtime, there isn't a second wasted in the film. Every minute feels like it adds something to the story, it adds something to the characters. And in spite of a relatively simple and straightforward story, there's quite a lot going on. A lot of little subplots going on in the background that end up coming together like some kind of jigsaw puzzle to complete the entire narrative and tie up loose ends. So the story follows a kind of dozy and dim-witted sheriff played by Sylvester Stallone, who's oblivious at first but slowly slowly realises that there's an incredible amount of corruption going on around him. An interesting debate to have is whether his character Freddy really was oblivious to the shenanigans, in which case he is pretty stupid for a sheriff, or whether he has managed to convince himself that there is nothing going on, because the people doing the corruption, in particular Ray Donlan, played by Cartel, are his longtime friends. Under his watch, police have literally been able to get away with murder, and if they are to face justice, it's up to him to grow some balls and do something about it. And literally most of the main cast spend their time shouting at Sly's character for how stupid and slow he is. I like the discovery that comes with the film, in the sense that it's best to go in blind as, uh, and as you watch the film you start to realise what it's about and who the main character is amongst this brilliant cast and what exactly is going on around him. Bar one or two lines of exposition, the film tends not to hold your hand and leaves you to keep up with the characters and events. The film has a nice collection of characters. Sly's Freddy is probably his best performance since Rocky where he plays a good-natured sheriff who would seem at home in a sleepy local town without crime and corruption, and that's what the town of Garrison, New Jersey seems to be for him due to his obliviousness to what's going on around him. He's always wanted to be a cop, but couldn't due to being deaf in one ear after rescuing a girl from a drowning car when he was younger, a girl who he is madly in love with, but is now married to another cop. Freddy's a nice guy, but he's a man lacking in action and packing in indecisiveness, as summarised best by the man himself when he says something along the lines of, if that girl was drowning today, I wouldn't save her, I'd just stand there and think about it. It's part of his personal development and arc that he's able to overcome whatever is stopping him from doing the right thing and fighting corruption, whether that's his passive nature, his fear of the corrupt cops or whatever. But it also gives him a purpose, it gives him a cause where before he had none. I get the feeling that though Freddy is quite a simple man, there's a lot of feelings and thoughts he has in his introverted little head of his, at war with each other, and always backing down in the vicinity of conflict, and Stallone is able to showcase this very well in what was actually a comeback for him after a string of failures, and it also reminded everyone that yes, this man does know how to act. Kaitel's Ray is the architect of the corruption in the film. He set up a haven for New York City cops to live in Garrison, a copland if you will, utilising a loophole that allows his cops to live outside of NYC, which is not allowed otherwise. He's essentially created a community for police officers and has done business with a mob-owned bank to get the cops low-interest housing mortgages. He's grown in power with the mob and police's backing, and it's gotten to a stage where he is untouchable, and officers who might cause him a problem by looking to testify against him to internal affairs end up dead. He's a scary guy, and he keeps Freddy on a leash by infantizing him. But when Freddy starts to get wise, Ray shows him his true colours. It's a cold character, stoic, intense, rigid, and just vintage Harvey Keitel. Keitel seems like one of those actors who doesn't really need to do anything, just by being in a film and delivering lines, it is enough to create and cultivate an intimidating character. Just like his recent cameo in The Irishman, he's just a very intimidating and intense looking guy, and was perfect for the part of Ray. Leota plays a guy called Gary Figgis, and Figgs is an undercover cop who is very much part of Ray's circle of cops, but he's slowly being pushed out and clearly has issues with Ray and his cronies not least because his partner was quote-unquote mysteriously killed after he was going to testify against Ray. Figs is close to Freddy, gives him advice, but ultimately he wants out of the whole thing. He wants to leave and start life afresh, and in order to raise the money to do this, he's willing to go down a dark path of his own. Leota was great in this film. He looked like he was still high off the coke his character had in Goodfellas, 
and he gave a nice, wild and erratic, anxiety-driven performance. De Niro plays Mo Tilden, an internal affairs investigator who shows up in Garrison, sniffing around. He and Ray go way back, coming up together in the same class. But according to Mo, something happened to Ray along the way, he changed. De Niro is low-key hilarious in this film. It looks like he had a lot of fun as someone not really directly involved with the main plot but showing up every now and again. It's one of the first films where I saw of De Niro where I thought, whoa, he's actually getting old. But something about his hair and moustache reminded me of De Niro's Rupert Pupkin character, and he even acted like him a bit as well. One of the first scenes with De Niro is when he walks into a bar where Keitel and his crew are hanging out, and the two share some feigned niceties. He just kind of cracks me up, because all the New Jersey guys are all tough and serious, with their sleeveless t-shirts showing their still hard muscles, and then there's De Niro wandering around in a bar with a big stupid smile on his face. In a film with loads of heavyweights, De Niro was a proper scene stealer. Who can forget his improvised whining about the napkins or telling Sly, You blew it! I think Copland is a perfect little film. The script is solid and the cast work so well together. The drama is gripping. It must say something about the trust the director had in Stallone's acting ability to have him at the centre of a movie with so many great actors, but he played the role perfectly. If I did have a complaint, I might argue that the ending whilst giving a much needed cathartic release and being in the same spirit as films like Taxi Driver and Unforgiven, was a little on the nose and a very action oriented ending to a drama oriented film. Basically, on his way to deliver a witness who's been targeted by corrupt cops, Stallone is ambushed by the T-1000 who shoots off a gun near his good ear, temporarily deafening him and it seems like he forgot what film he's in. Thinking he's filming Rambo, Stallone goes on a rampage and almost single-handedly wipes out an entire crew of corrupt cops. I liked it, but I did feel like it belonged in a different movie. Copland is a great little film that I would highly recommend to fans of crime films. The only problem is I think I've oversold it now. Don't go in expecting a masterpiece, but it's a solid masculine film.